Hey guys, it's Ryan James and we're back. Next story, also one of my favourites, Bogey Boy, from the book Just Stupid by Andy Griffiths. Let's begin. I'm cramped. I'm cold. I can hardly breathe. I've been lying under my sister's bed for more than an hour now. Where is she? The clock near the front door has just tried midnight and she told mum and dad she'd be home by, she'd be home by 11. It's not exactly a lot of fun down here. The bed is really low. Every time I try to take a breath, my no my chest presses against the bottom of the bed. So why am I here? I'll tell you why. Revenge! I'm doing it to pay Jen back for laughing at me because I wet my bed. Not that I actually did wet my bed. But, well, it did. But it happened because I was trying to put out a fire. Well... You can't really explain the differences to people like Jen. Especially if they're rolling around on the ground laughing at you. Well, two can play at that game. Jen might not wet her bed recently, but she's still scared of the bogeyman. I know this because I overheard her confessing it to her boyfriend. She's convinced the bogeyman lives under her bed and is just waiting for a chance to grab her ankle and pull her under. Well, tonight, her nightmare's gonna come true. When she gets home, I'm gonna reach out and grab her ankle. She'll die! She's out on a date with Craig Bennett. They've been going out together since the school social. I can't imagine what she sees in him. He's got no sense of humour. He tried to punch in my head and at the social because I tricked him into thinking I was a girl. How was I to know he'd fall in love with me? So is right for being such a sleaze. For all I know, they probably got home ages ago and were probably standing out in the driveway smooching all this time. Maybe I should go and check. I could be wasting an even better opportunity to get revenge on Jen. I could throw a bucket of water over her and Craig. I could ring the police and tell them two suspicious looking teenagers are hanging around outside. I could, I could get a cardboard tube and stand on the roof of the house and provide a running commentary on the action for the benefit of the neighbours. The possibilities are so endless. And a lot more fun than lying here. I start wriggling out from underneath the bed. Hang on. What's that? I see, I hear sounds outside. Footsteps coming at the path. I hear the key in the front door. Just in time. I wriggle back under again. Not long now. In any moment, Jen will open her bedroom door. She will click on the light. She will approach the bed. I will reach out and grab her ankle. She will scream. I will roar like a monster. She will scream again. I will roar again. But this time, I won't be like a monster. I'll be roaring with laughter. <laughs> I hear whispering. Jen's room is right next to the front door. Would you like to come in? Says Jen. Are you sure it's alright? Says Craig. Yes, of course I'm sure, says Jen. What about your parents? Says Craig. Don't worry about them, says Jen. Their bedroom is upstairs. They won't wake up. And even if they do, I'll just tell them you're borrowing a CD or something. What about your stupid little brother? Says Craig. What if he's still up? Oh, don't... Don't worry about him. Says Jen. He would have been in bed hours ago. He's just a child. Some child? Says Craig. I should have told him a lesson when I had the chance. Nobody makes a fool of Craig Bennett and gets away with it. He didn't make a fool of you, Craig. Says Jen. He was the one who looked ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Craig snorts. Those action man undies. <laughs> what a loser. They're both laughing. I don't see what's so funny. Action man's not a loser. Come on, says Jen. Just for a minute. Well, okay, says Craig. Just for a minute. Damn. Still more waiting. I hope Craig doesn't stay for long. They come into the hall and close the door very quietly behind them. Jen flicks her bedroom light on. Come in. She says. I hear the door click shut. Oh no, I don't believe it. She's brought him into her bedroom. If they find out I'm here, I'll be in serious trouble. They'll think I'm spying on them. I have to get out of here, but I can't. They'll see me. Jen kicks off her shoes. One comes sliding across the floor and kicks and, and whacks me in the left ear. Ouch! I, gr I clench my teeth. I'm straining my head without moving my eyes to see where they are. 
I can see their feet. Jen is in the middle of the room. Craig is over near her dressing table. Wow, he says. Is this a real crystal ball? Jen's got this enormous crystal ball. It's practically as big as a bowling ball. In fact, if you ask me, it's pretty obvious. All it needs is three holes drilled in the top and it will be perfect. Yes, says Jen. I can see the future in it. Am I there? Says Craig. I can see Jen's feet move towards the dressing table. Of course you are, says Jen. I had the best night, Craig. You really know how to make a girl feel... special. Well, that's not too hard, says Craig. You're a very special girl, Jen. Uh, here, this is for you. Oh, says Jen. I love roses. It's beautiful, just like the ones Dad grows. Uh, actually, it is one of your dads, says Craig. I picked it on the way in. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. Says Jen. Nothing's too much trouble for you. Says Craig. I've got to get out of here. Before I throw up. What's n a rose? How corny. What's next? A box of chocolates? Ouch! Says Jen. He pricked me. The rose hits the floor. It's not far from my head. If she bends down to pick it up, she's going to see me. I move away from the corner of the bed as I dare. Are you alright? Says Craig. Here, let me kiss it better. I can see Craig's black leather shoes facing Jen's bare feet in the center of her yin and yang rug. Craig is standing on the white bed. Jen is on the black bed. Their feet are very close. For a few minutes, there's no sound. Oh, Craig, says Jen. Oh, Jen, says Craig. Oh, brother, I say. Although I say it very quietly so they don't hear me. And at the corner of my eye, I see movement. Something is coming out of the rose. Something black. Something hairy. Something disgusting. Something with fangs! This is not good. Not only am I trapped underneath my sister's bed while she smooches with her focus friend to punch my head on at least two occasions, but now I've got a killer spider heading straight for my ear hole. It's not a big spider or anything, but it's the small ones that are really lethal. What if it gives him one of those bites and never heals? The saw your body starts... Go, go, goes old all over until you're practically a zombie. Or worse, what if it's pregnant and just wants to paralyze me and lay its eggs in my flesh so when the baby's hatch, they've got lots of fresh meat to feed on? My only hope is that Craig and Jen will see, will see it and deal with it before it reaches me. Look down! Look down! Oh, Craig, says Jen. Oh, Jen, says Craig. I don't think they look I don't think they're gonna look down. The spider is drawing closer. It's so close I can see the light glinting of its enormous black fangs. It's coming to get me. Hang on. Jen and Craig are moving closer to the bed. Maybe they'll stop in it. Come on, please, please. Craig's feet stop beside the bed. I can't see the spider anymore. Maybe he's still in it. Well, I don't know for sure. Hang on! There it is! The spider is on the toe of Craig's shoe! It's gonna crawl up its leg! Excellent! Well, not excellent for Craig, but excellent for me! All I have to do now is wait. Sooner or later, Craig is gonna notice there's a spider on him. He'll freak! Jen will see the spider and go hysterical. She's even more terrified of spiders than she is of the bogeyman. She will scream and run out of the room. Craig will follow her. Mum and Dad will wake up and in all the commotion, I'll slip quietly back to my room. Ha, <laughs> simple. They, then they get, then Jen, then Jen and Craig get on the bed. It buckles under the weight and pushes against my chest. Wait, I'm even more crammed than I was before. I wish that spider would hurry up. I'm gonna suffocate down here. Suddenly I feel a tiny little itch just below my ear. Oh, I hate that. It's really itchy. And the more I can't scratch it, the more it itches. But I can't scratch it because I'm too because I'm too cramped. I need to take my mind off it. I'll do my seven times table. One seven to seven, two seven to fourteen, three sevens are uh, uh oh, damn this itch! I can't concentrate! I can't even remember what three times seven is. 
this, this itch is totally the worst. Now it's on my cheek and it's spreading. Hang on. It's not spreading. It's moving. It just don't move. I don't think it's an itch. I think it's the spider. Okay. I'm going to stay calm. I'll be alright if I stay calm. I'm not going to panic. I don't... I don't know for sure if it's a spider, it's, it could just be a moth or an ant, something harmless. Whatever it is, I'm sure I can squash it if I, if I push, if I roll my head and push my cheek against my shoulder. Um, not a good idea. Now it's, now, nah, turning has made whatever it is move closer. Now it's on my chin. I strain my eyes, look down. Oh no, it's the spider. It looks much bigger up close. I want to scream, but the but the spider pr presses a leg against my lips as if to shush me. This is our secret, it seems to be saying. This is just between you and me. It draws its furry body across my mouth and pauses against my ear. My lips are shut tight. Maybe I could blow it off. But I but before I do that, I'm gonna stay calm. I'll be all right if I don't panic. Okay, now I need to blow the spider off so I can live happily ever after. I pop my lips the, the tiniest amount possible and blow. The spider doesn't move. It flans its body. I need a bigger breath. I draw in the biggest breath I have and blow. The spider doesn't move. For all I know, it's like standing in front of a heater on a cold day. Suddenly, Jen squeals. Stop it, Craig! She says. That tickles! Stop, please! No! They thumped a, it, their weight thumps down on the bed and against my chest. I gasp. <gasps> Something catches in my throat. I go. Oh no. I just swallowed the spider. <laughs> I scream. What's that? Says Craig. They've heard me, but I don't care. All I care about is the spider. What if it bites me on the inside? That's even worse than getting bitten on the outside. The poison will go straight into my bloodstream. I could be dead within minutes. I'm gagging and coughing, trying to get it out. I'm too young to die. <laughs> it's the bogeyman! Screams Jen. He's under the bed. Craig's face appears beside me. Bogey boy, more like, he says. It's your stupid little brother. He grabs my arm and drags me out, but I don't care. He's doing me a favour. I want to get out of here. I've got to get to a hospital before the poison takes effect, before the convulsions start. Andy, says Jen. I try to stand up. It's not easy because I'm so stiff at being crammed under the bed for so long. Well, maybe it's the first sign of the poison setting in. Maybe, maybe, maybe my whole body will seize up and I won't be able to move it at all. I stagger to the door. Stop him, says Jen. Craig strays across the room. He pushes me away from the door with his back against it. Not so fast, buddy, he says, rolling up his shirt sleeves. I think we need to have a little talk. Jen gets up from the bed and joins Craig at the door. What are you doing under there? She says. Yeah, you little weirdo, says Craig. Explain. I haven't got time to explain, I say. I have to go to the hospital. It's a matter of life or death. Craig snorts. <laughs> it's a matter of life or death, all right, he says. But you won't need a hospital by the time I've finished with you. You'll be going straight to the morgue. Yeah, you're in big trouble, Andy, says Jen. Wait till I tell mum and dad. You do that and tell me you got home late and you had Craig in your room, I say. Oh, just deny it, says Jen. But it's true, I say. I know that, and you know that, says Jen. But who do you think Mum and Dad are going to believe? Me or you? She's got a point. But I don't care. I don't care about anything right now. I'm going to die. Please let me go, I beg. I swear I won't tell anybody nothing. Just let me go. Suddenly, I feel the most extraordinary sensation at the back of my throat. Are you okay, Andy? Says Jen. You've gone green. Probably just another one of his damn tricks, says Craig. No, says Jen. Look at him. I think there really is something wrong. I can't speak. 
It's like when you touch the back of your throat to make yourself feel sick. Although it's not me doing the touching, it's the spider. It's trying to climb out. I gag again. Something flies out of my mouth and lands on the carpet. Something wet. Something furry. Something disgusting. We all stare at it. A leg extends in the furry blob. Then another, and another, and another. That is truly gross. But better, but better at it in, I guess. It it crawls along the it, it crawls along the floor towards the door. Towards Craig and Jen. Jen screams. Ah! Craig screams. Ah! Even louder than Jen. Uh, they both run from the door back to the bed. They are huddled in the corner, clutching each other, staring at me in horror. Go away, says Jen. Get out. So this is what it's like to be the bogeyman. This is what it's like to have people afraid of you. I think I could get used to this. I make a big show of licking my lips. I look down at the spider. Nice fiber, I say. But a bit hairy. Either of you want to try it? Jen puts a hand over her mouth. Craig goes white. What's the matter? I say, aren't you feeling well? They both shake their heads. I move towards the door. My work here is done. Sweet dreams, I say. Well, that was quite a story, wasn't it? Well, I'll be back with another video soon before you can say... Well, whatever you can say, this is Ryan Jennings, and I'm out.